Jermaine O'Neal's life after basketball is more unbelievable than his freakish talent. And this dude was so good, the first three high school players to the NBA in the 90s were Kevin Garnett, Kobe Bryant, and Jermaine O'Neal. He was a six-time All-Star, made three All-NBA teams, but what he's done since is even better. To understand why, you gotta understand where Jermaine O'Neal comes from. This video takes a look at his story to answer what happened to Jermaine O'Neal. Hey, it's Casey, welcome to AM Hoops. This video and this awesome story about Jermaine O'Neal is sponsored by DraftKings and I'm so excited to work with them because to me there is no better way to enjoy the entire season and just individual games. Plus, because you have to get so creative with lineups, you will know who is up and coming before anyone else. You rack up fantasy points for rebounds and assists, blocks, steals, and everything else, but the way you do it is you build a team to try to beat other players, and you've got a budget of $50,000. Obviously, if you pick Giannis, he's gonna go off, so you have to get creative and really research to find out who else is gonna play well that no one's thinking of. To play for the $1 million prize for free, enter code AMHOOPS on your first deposit or click the link down below in the description. So again, that is promo code AMHOOPS. It gets you the free entry to the million dollar prize with your first deposit and it helps out the channel. Again, thanks to DraftKings. O'Neal is from Columbia, South Carolina. His father left his mom and older brother before Jermaine was even born. Not only are fatherless kids three times more likely to drop out of school, but Columbia at that time had three times the average violent crime rate. His mom had to work almost every day, so Jermaine and his brother had very little supervision and they ditched school all the time. When he did go, he would fight. Jermaine's temper was notorious. He got suspended multiple times for beating kids up. The good news though, is by that time, he was introduced to basketball. O'Neal grew to six foot four as a freshman. The Eau Claire basketball team was lucky as hell to have a freakish athlete like Jermaine come to their school. The only problem was the coach. This guy, George Glenf, was not taking troublemakers. He only coached guys who went to class, made grades, and didn't sag their pants or wear jewelry. You know, basically everything Jermaine was about. There were actually guys at this school with really great talents who refused to play for Coach Glenf and follow his rules. Lucky for Jermaine though, he was willing to do it because that experience changed his game and his life. And honestly, I have a ton of respect for Coach Glenf. I mean, you don't hear enough about coaches like this. Like, he did not care at all about winning games if it came at the expense of a kid growing up in his character. Like, he stepped in and became the father figure that Jermaine never had. But it wasn't perfect. O'Neal almost got charged when his girlfriend's dad caught them messing around underage. But Jermaine did become focused. They won three state championships in four years and college was calling. The only reason Jermaine didn't go to college was a scheduling mistake for the SATs. He missed the test on the last day and couldn't qualify. So Jermaine was forced to declare for the draft at 18 years and one month old, but he was picked by the Portland Trailblazers with the 17th selection. So Jermaine beat the odds and accomplished a lifelong dream. Dude became an instant millionaire, could pull his family out of poverty, but it was not close to the end of hard times. First on the court, he was on a talented Trailblazers team and was buried on the bench. After three plus years, they traded for Scottie Pippen, Detlef Schrempf, and Steve Smith, so he was even further down the depth chart. So Jermaine asked to be traded, and Portland did one of the worst deals ever, giving him up for just Dale Davis. Davis was an all-star once for the Pacers, but he was post 30 years old and averaged seven points and seven boards for Portland. Jermaine, on the other hand, became one of the greatest Pacers ever. He immediately averaged a double-double, then made the all-star team and won most improved in year two in Indy, 
The Pacers pulled off a quick rebuild with an exciting young core around Hall of Famer Reggie Miller. They had all-stars Jermaine O'Neal, Ron Artest, and Brad Miller, plus Al Harrington and Jamal Tinsley. He was a big man, master in the post, Rare to see someone his size with mobility and range. O'Neal's temper followed him in the league too, and he was never afraid to stand up for himself. Year three as a Pacer was an emotional one, both up and down. Jermaine finally signed his first big contract for under 26 million, but they were upset in the first round of the playoffs. And before that, he came home with his mom to find his stepfather had just shot himself in the head. Despite all the ups and downs of 2003, the team took off the next season. Jermaine led Indy to an NBA best record 61 and 21. He was a beast again, averaging over 20 points and 10 boards with above average defense. They lost in the playoffs to the eventual champion Detroit Pistons, but that bad blood set things up for next year and one of the most infamous events in recent sports history. On November 19th, 2004, Ron Artest fouled Ben Wallace hard in Detroit when the game was basically a blowout. Wallace shoved Artest and a fight broke out. When Artest laid down at the scorer's table just to calm himself, a fan named John Green nailed Artest with a cup of soda in the chest from several rows up. Artest charged into the stands and punched the wrong fan. The entire place went insane. Fans were on the court. One guy challenged Artest who got decked. Steven Jackson went in the stands. Jermaine flew in and landed a punch too. It was an ugly scene. As a captain of that team, um, you are put in positions to have to make decisions for your team. And um, when you make a decision for your team, you stand with your team. I believed in what I did, and I will absolutely do it again. I will absolutely do it again because at that point, people are trying to kill you over a basketball game. Indiana's Ron Artest has been suspended for the remainder of the season. Indiana's Steven Jackson has been suspended for 30 games. Indiana's Jermaine O'Neal has been suspended for 25 games. That broke the team up. The next season, Artest demanded a trade. A team that was ascending crashed. He could have won a championship. Instead, Jermaine's prime years were wasted. He had two more all-star seasons and good years in Miami and one in Toronto, but he would never have a better shot to win a ring and injuries hit big. He missed 224 of the remaining 672 games in his final nine years. I think his greatest contribution to a championship team actually was being the Warriors vet one year before the dynasty. He taught them valuable lessons he learned about how short a window of opportunity really is. So despite all the accolades and the talent, Jermaine O'Neal never won an NBA championship. But what he's doing now is just as amazing. He has become one of the greatest post-basketball businessmen in NBA history. At 18 years old, instead of buying expensive cars and handing out money, he started investing. O'Neal owns over 32 Church's Chicken franchises, plus two other restaurants. He has flipped two star hotels in Napa Valley and Cabo San Lucas into five star resorts. He owns pieces of about 10 Bay Area tech companies, including one with the Warriors owners and a sports agency business he started with Tracy McGrady. But his passion project is Drive Nation, an indoor youth sports facility Jermaine uses to help kids in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So many players go broke getting money at a young age, but Jermaine somehow has defied statistics at every stage. Odds were he was gonna be a gang member or a dropout. Nope, odds were he wouldn't make the NBA. Uh-uh. Odds were he was gonna blow his money coming into the league poor at just 18 years old. No again. The only tragedy at this point in his life is that the Pacers refused to retire his number seven jersey. Malcolm Brogdon wears it today. 
Some people say Hall of Famers are the only ones who deserve a retired jersey, but I honestly think the malice in the palace is what's holding the Pacers back, and they need to get over that. Because O'Neal was an MVP talent, a lot for the All-Star game, and one of the greatest Pacers ever. To the rest of us though, he's an inspirational story that defied the statistics the whole way. Support AM Hoops and click subscribe. Don't miss a daily NBA video.